The NBA draft is just two days away, and there is a draft prospect who keeps popping up in conversations for the Bulls with their second round pick. I want to introduce you to him. I'm Ross, this is our Tourist Fan Club, and if you love the Chicago Bulls, if you love basketball, if you love Chicago sports content, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, let me know that you enjoyed the video, helps me determine what kind of content you guys want to see in the future. And I know you guys want to see this one because I've been getting asked about this a bunch. JT Thor. This is a guy that a bunch of you wanted to hear me talk about. And here we are. So I appreciate you guys uh, being engaged, letting me know who you want to see from. And like I said, we're just two days away from the draft. So what better time than now uh, to talk about him? And I did want to point out my guy, Daniel Greenberg at Shy Sport Updates on Twitter actually had a tweet this morning. It's funny. I just, like I said, I keep hearing his name pop up um, that the Bulls have a good amount of interest in JT Thor. They've talked to him several times and he worked out for the team. So the interest is there. The intrigue of potential is there. And I want to kind of break down why I think he would be a really good fit for the Bulls and why he's quickly becoming one of my favorite options with the 38th overall pick. So first off, uh, if, you, if you're not familiar, he played for Auburn. He is a, a forward technically, but he's very versatile. Um, in a lot of ways, some Patrick Williams comparisons could be made there. Um, he's he's very switchy. You can switch him between like the three and even up to the five. He's six nine with a seven three wingspan. This guy can play a rim protector role while also being able to leak out and defend players on the perimeter. So he's like I keep saying, very versatile. He's got dude. You guys are gonna clip this. I know. This guy is long. This guy got length. All right. He is. I, I mean. Watching him sometimes reminds me of Bull Bull in some ways of like the the length that he has, the ability to block shots at the rim, the ability to switch. Um, and, you know, he has a, a jumper, too, which we'll get into. Um, the biggest strength of his is absolutely or the biggest potential I see is absolutely at the rim, uh, being able to to block shots, kind of hold down the center of the of the court, which is a problem the Bulls have right now. And one of the reasons I really like the idea of drafting JT Thor, uh, name aside, because his name is amazing and he should be drafted because of his name anyway, but the fact that Daniel Tice is very likely to walk in free agency this offseason, if we're being honest about it, there was a report that came out today that the Houston Rockets are interested in Daniel Tice. A lot of teams are going to be interested in Daniel Tice. We're going to need someone who can block shots. <laughs> like... We don't have someone who can meet you at the rim right now. Nikola Vucevic is just not that guy, pal. And Thad Young obviously can do it, but that's not his preferred role. You know, he was playing a little bit out of position, um, out of necessity before the, the Daniel Tice trade. So the ability to, to block shots at the rim, um, especially for a rookie, is going to be huge. Um, I think this guy will be able to contribute right off the bat. And something I haven't even mentioned yet, he's 19 years old. It, uh, once again, a Patrick Williams comparison can be made there. One of the youngest players in the entire draft, he's going to spend his entire rookie season as a 19-year-old. And that is both a gift and a curse because there is so much potential there. Um, this guy has a very bright future ahead of him. He has the potential to grow even more than he already has. But at the same time, you know, 19 years old, there are some concerns about how raw of a prospect he is. His game is a little bit unpolished. And the problem the Bulls have had for <laughs> three, four years now is relying on players that are very young to develop quickly. And it has not happened. And I think Patrick Williams will take a step next season. I have a lot of faith in him, but looking at JT Thor, it, it, it feels like we're doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results, right? Like I want this guy, I'm, I'm excited to get him, but he's not going to solve all of our problems as soon as we draft him. You know, I'm sure he will contribute immediately, but we still need a, a backup center and someone who can protect the rim aside Nikola Vucevic or instead of Nikola Vucevic when he's off the court. So re relying on 19 year olds to, to save your franchise is a bad bet. 
and it shows some of the flaws that the Bulls have overall, aside from, you know, the, the obvious point guard issue that we have right now. Um, the front court depth is going to be an issue. And it's something that needs to be addressed in free agency or trades this offseason. Um, addressing it in the draft is a very good thing. I'm not arguing against that. I'm just saying that can't be the answer to everything. We need to make other moves as well as drafting a, a talented young player like JT Thor. So offensively, you know, we've talked defensively. He, like I said, he he is very long. Um, he times his blocks really well. He's good at, at contesting shots without getting called for fouls. Um, he uses that length that we've talked about to close out on the perimeter really well. He's just got the longest arms. Um, he pokes the ball away too with those long arms, and then he turns those those steals and those blocks into opportunities offensively. Um, he's a little bit limited, but he has a bag. He has some dribble moves. He likes the fadeaway. He likes the turnaround jumper. Um, he gets into the into the paint really well. Once again, he's got so much length. Um, he's able to get past defenders. He's able to get to the rack. And once he gets there, man, this dude, he's angry at the rim. He's mad at the rim. He wants the rim to feel pain because he punishes the rim all the time. He is an explosive dunker. Um, he's got great hops. And him and Zach are going to be lob city if JT Thor comes to Chicago. Because you're going to be you're going to be watching Nikola Vucevic, whoever a point guard ends up being, tossing lobs to these guys all game long. Um, pretty smart off the cut. Knows how to get to his spot. Um, unpolished in the way that he's not much of a... If he has the ball in his hands... He's, he's not much of a shot creator necessarily. He gets himself into trouble sometimes um, because he's not the strongest. So there will be a lot of times where he kind of uses his athleticism to, to get to a spot, but then he gets double teamed or he gets himself stuck with the ball in his hands and he clanks up a bad shot or he turns the ball over. Doesn't have great vision, not the best passer. So just with the ball in his hands, he's not the strongest. But that's not to say that he can't develop those those abilities. I think if he does come to the Bulls, you know, playing alongside Thad Young, who obviously is a very good passer, uh, could be huge for his development. Um, as far as shooting goes, he can hit the three, not super consistently. He has a nice motion. It's a very fluid shot, but he's not the most consistent with that three pointer and sometimes takes bad shots. Uh, like I already said, he'll get himself into bad positions or sometimes just miss the open man and take the shot himself and completely brick it. Um, but that's not to say he can't be a good spot up shooter. Um, I do think he has potential in that regard. And having such a fluid shot motion in general is going to be really beneficial for, for the development of his jumper. So I think that there's a lot of potential here. The reason I think he's falling into the second round, because like you hear me talk about all these things he's great at, you watch the highlights, but the reason I think he's falling into the second round has more to do with the polish. Um, he's more of a raw prospect. There's things that he needs to get better at um, that could take years. You know, th th this might not be a thing that he develops in the first year or the second year. You know, developing the ability to see the court, um, getting a feel for the game, putting on muscle, getting stronger, those things take time and you know it, it needs to be the right kind of muscle we saw that with Laurie Markinen. um i don't i don't think this guy needs to necessarily put on upper body strength he needs to work on his core strength because right now he's not much of a post defender you know you can stick him there in the paint and he uses those long arms to block shots at the rim but if you put him on an nba4 a big like if, if we're looking at the bulls like if he were to try to defend someone like thad young or nikola vucevic he would just get completely bodied. He would get bullied. He would get pushed around. Um, he needs to work on that core strength if he wants to be a true rim protector and play in the center of the court. Um, but that's not to say that I don't like what his skill set is as it is right now. Um, I do think it's it's great that he has the ability to switch like that and can use the, the length to, to block shots um, because that gives you more flexibility at the four. Um, you know, he's not a true five. He's not a true four. He's not a, a three necessarily, but he can switch between all three of those positions and play them pretty well defensively. Um, and that once again goes back to Patrick Williams, who like very similar in the way that they play defense. Um, very switchy um, and has potential as a rim protector. I think Thor has more potential as a rim protector than uh, Patrick Williams does. But, you know, being able to have that depth 
uh, for the Bulls, the flexibility is just so, so, so important, especially this season when we're kind of cap strapped and drafting a player might be one of the, <laughs> the most advantageous ways to acquire a player because trades are going to be limited with the assets that we have. Cap space is already limited. You know, the guy that we draft, there's going to be some pressure on him. He's going to have to come in and probably contribute right off the bat. So Thor is a guy that I am actually getting really happy about, getting really excited about. You know, we've talked about Quentin Grimes. We've talked about Miles McBride. We've talked about Josh Primo. We've talked about a lot of these guys who will probably be available at 38 for the Bulls. Thor, I'm not totally sure. Um, Grimes, actually, he's rising, so he probably won't be available at 38. If the Bulls want him, they'll probably have to trade up. Thor is like in that 30 to 35 range right now, um, based on some of the mock drafts I've been looking at and just kind of the value and which teams are in need of a player like him he might get scooped up right before we're up on the clock. So if that were to happen, um, here's a scenario for you guys. And I know we're not going to get too far into trades because this isn't a trade video, but if the bulls are on the clock at 38 and all of these different guys are gone that they wanted, maybe you trade the pick for a guy like Jarrett Culver, who today it was announced that the Timberwolves are shopping around. Obviously had some struggles, but with the Timberwolves, uh, don't put a ton of stock into that. I still think he has a ton of potential. He was a guy that a lot of Bulls play, a lot of Bulls fans wanted us to draft, but wasn't available um, when we were up. So that's an option, trading the pick, getting a guy like Culver, getting, there's a lot of different options. You could package Tomas Sadoransky and try to make a run at someone or make a run at a point guard. I don't know. There are a lot of options, but JT Thor, for me, if he's available, just take him. Don't trade the pick. Uh, don't even think about... I mean, if Quentin Grimes is available, I would say take Quentin Grimes. But JT Thor is my next best option at this point if we stay put at 38. If we were to trade up, I would like to see the Bulls maybe make a run at Sharif Cooper. Um, I already said Quentin Grimes. Um, I already said Miles McBride. But there are a lot of players that the Bulls could trade up for. If we stay put, I would be very happy if JT Thor fell to us. Uh, once again, it fills a need. And if Daniel Tice does walk in free agency, you know, I'll feel a lot better about JT Thor coming in as a cheap backup option. Um, and, you know, like I already said, looking at more depth is still important. But if Daniel Tice walks and we don't get JT Thor, we got nothing. That's a very difficult situation to remedy. You know, we've got Thad Young and Nikola Vucevic, but that's about it. So if that ends up happening, um, having the ability to, to bring in a rookie who can right off the bat block some shots would be super, super key for the Bulls. And we'll see what happens, man. I mean, like I keep saying, draft is on Thursday. It is coming up quicker than you guys think. And I will be covering all of it. <laughs> Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Arturis Fan Club. You guys know how to find me. I am going to have a whole live tweeting extravaganza on draft night probably won't live stream because it's going to be a while until we get to the bulls pick maybe hop on a twitter space when we get to the bulls pick but you know for most of the night just be live tweeting keeping up to date with trades because trades are happening things are things are happening right now the ball is rolling we will see what our tourist karnashovas and mark eversley end up doing and any big news, any breaking news, you guys know this is the place to find it. So make sure to hit subscribe. Make sure to like the video to let me know you enjoyed this draft prospect scouting report. We could do another one tomorrow potentially, but on Thursday morning, I want to drop a full guide to the draft and well, a full guide to the Bulls side of the draft at least and give you all of the prospects I've looked at um, and who makes the most sense. JT Thor will obviously be on that list. And we'll uh, we'll talk to we'll talk about that when we get to that. So thank you guys for watching. I uh, I really enjoyed looking at JT Thor's tape, and hopefully you guys enjoyed listening to me talk about him. Make sure to go check out the other videos I did on Quentin Grimes, Miles McBride, Josh Primo. There's a bunch of different scouting report videos I've already done, um, and I'll leave those links in the description. So thanks again, guys, and we will talk very soon.